Gunna has a new advocate in getting him out of jail, Kim Kardashian. The question is, will this work? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Escape in the Echo Chamber. Gunna is a rapper. He is currently in jail. He's not the only one. He's on the Young Thug label and Young Thug is also in jail. They're, they got caught up in a RICO case, Racketeering Influenced Corrupt Organization. Huge type of conspiracy that the government uses so that they can basically hit people with more time for smaller acts because those acts, according to the government, are connected to larger, more dangerous acts. So the long and short of it is, he has a very serious criminal case that he's facing in Atlanta. He's in Fulton County Jail and he wants to get out. He's trying to get bail. He's trying to get out. And now Kim Kardashian has said, hey, free gunner. That's what she said on Twitter. So Kim Kardashian has said on Twitter to free gunner. That doesn't mean that that's where it's going to stop. Why do I say that? Because a lot of people can get on Twitter and can say, hey, free this person, free that person. This is Kim Kardashian who has a history of being very active in criminal justice reform and criminal justice issues. So she's advocated on behalf of other individuals and other issues before. In fact, I think that's what even led her to start studying law. And she may have even passed the bar by now. But with Kim Kardashian, who number one is a billionaire, very famous billionaire, very active and very committed to criminal justice reform and criminal justice issues, that can't be a bad thing for Gunna. So right now, Gunna's got to be pretty happy that at least he has somebody that is as high profile as Kim Kardashian going to bat for him. Gunna's not happy about the jail conditions. And quite frankly, he shouldn't be. Why would you be happy about jail conditions? The question I have to ask all of you watching is have you ever been to jail or prison? And if you haven't, you may think it's bad and you have based your opinion on stuff you've seen on TV. The interesting thing is the aspects of jail that really get you because yeah, you'll see on TV the violence and the threat of certain non-consensual activity is what they will constantly talk about. But there are so many other issues in jail in jail and prisons that just make the conditions very, very unpleasant. And yeah, that's the point. The lack of privacy in terms of having the COs having access to everything like all of your stuff there, there, you have no privacy from the prison, from the guards, from the COs to the point that if you go to a visit, you're getting strip searched, bend over, uh, squat, you know, lift up your sack, all that kind of stuff. This is something you go through, especially if you, if you're getting regular visits, this is something you're going through regularly. The pat downs, the shakedowns, going through your property, making sure you don't have contraband, the not even being able to use the bathroom in private. So in the cells, they have toilets. Guess what? You may want to put your towel over the door so that you can cover the window while using the bathroom. But generally speaking, prison rules say, no, you can't do that. Now, some guards, some COs won't bother you. There are some COs who, oh no, the rules say, hey, what's going on in there? No, you, you gotta, you can't cover up the window. So that means you can't even take a dump in peace. That kind of stuff gets to you. The food is garbage and you basically aren't in control of your life. So I get why Gunna is unhappy and Gunna really should have seen that, wait a minute, prison is not someplace I want to be. Now that he knows that he doesn't want to be there, the question is, is he taking it seriously? There's a story I have to tell you about Fulton County Jail where Gunna is currently being held. A couple of months ago, a nurse who works at the jail, she was contractor, she's a contractor to work at the jail, on, is on her way to work. She comes inside the facility and staff has to go through, has to be checked on their way in to make sure they're not, you know, bringing anything that they're not supposed to be bringing in. As she's going through this checkpoint, one of the people checking in says, hey, you smell like marijuana. You smell like weed. She says, oh yeah, I, I smoked before I came here. Now that in itself is not something you're supposed to say. The answer is no, I don't know why I smell like marijuana or, oh yeah, there were some guys at my apartment building smoking right in front of my house. They must've gotten on my cloak, something like that. Admitting that you have been smoking marijuana is not a good thing for her if she wanted to keep her job, but it gets worse. After admitting that she had smoked marijuana, she left her bag, which was being checked and ran from the facility, jumped in a car, peeled off. Why did she do that? Why did she leave her bag behind? Why didn't she at least stay around to see if maybe she would be able to keep a job? Because of what was in her bag. 
cigarettes, tobacco, marijuana, and crack. Yes, crack cocaine. Those were the things that were in her bag, wrapped up, that she was attempting to smuggle inside. Now, what does this have to do with Gunner? Well, according to prosecutors, she was bringing it in for Gunner. When that story broke, I automatically thought, wait a minute, isn't, aren't they over there? I said, oh, well, let me see what happens. But they caught her, they found her in like Mississippi or Tennessee. And I think considering what she's looking at, she's a civilian, well, kind of, considering what she's looking at, she probably said, okay, this is who I'm bringing it in for. It's very likely somebody is talking and somebody is saying, this is who the drugs were for. So the prosecutors are telling the judge, no, he cannot be given bail because in addition to the charges for which he is, he is in jail for, while he's in jail, he's been trying to run a criminal organization. He's trying to continue running his criminal organization from inside jail. That is not a good look. So when I say, is he taking it seriously? If he's trying to get out, still trying to do stupid stuff like that, isn't really taking it seriously that you want to get out. That severely undermines any argument that you are entitled to release because he's online and he's complaining, saying that his constitutional rights are being violated. And it's like, dude, you should have fell back, allegedly. If you actually did it, you shouldn't have been involved in that activity. Leave that for somebody else. You have something to lose. You could have just said, hey, if anybody else wants to do that, let them do that. I'm focused on getting out so I can fight the case from outside and much less uncomfortably. But it seems like he's not getting out before trial. And this is being used as one of the reasons why. See, the important thing is, if you're trying to get out of jail, if you're trying to do something, you gotta keep your nose clean. If you're sentenced and you're like, hey, okay, I'm going in now. Now now it's time to do what it is, whatever it is I'm doing. That is, that is what it is. But you're pre-trial and trying to get bail. Don't get caught up in the stuff that dudes that have no shot at bail are getting caught up in. Leave that for them. Like you have a different path, you have something to lose, you're supposed to keep your nose clean. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem, at least according to the prosecutors, that he's been taking it seriously enough to do so. But I hope something happens from this, because right now he seems to be having a very unpleasant time. I'm not happy for that, but something good can come of it. Because if he remembers what he's going through right now, if he remembers the pain, the suffering, the absolute the disgust he feels with being in this situation, I hope he spreads the word. I hope he spreads the word about how unpleasant, about how it's just not a place to be. Like having a having another man check your sack, ha make you lift up your sack, that's not the place to be. That's not a good look. So we could sit around and, and, and look at, you know, you got youngins looking at prison as a badge of honor, but you gotta tell them, listen, you don't wanna be there. You do not wanna be there it's not a good place to be. It's not a pleasant place to be. And just the, the lack of dignity, the lack of control over your own life, it's just not what you want to do. This is not where you want to end up. I hope he uses this opportunity to push that message hard body. And I hope that there are young people watching and listening who realize, you know what? Maybe I need to do something else. As always, thank you for checking out this episode of Escaping the Echo Chamber, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, like, share, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. But if you disagree with me, if you think, no, he doesn't need to, he doesn't need to spread the message that this is a bad place, prison is great. Feel free to give me a thumbs down and write in the comment section if you would enjoy having to lift up your nutsack to see your family every week. I'll see you next time.